China is running out of children. There are lots of upsides to making bikes for kids. For one thing, they are easy to build. Teenage mountain bikes are a bit fiddly, but smaller ones need no special machinery at all. Also, children grow. Sell a three-year-old their first ride, and two years later, their parents have to buy a bigger one, and so it goes on for years to come. The downside: China is running out of children. Pingshang, in the province of Hebei, some four hundred kilometers south of Beijing, is a revealing place to see the country's demographic future playing out today. A scruffy county in northern China that has become a center for the children's bicycle industry. Like many industrial clusters in China, it grew over decades as business people forged networks, helped by local officials offering tax breaks and other subsidies. Initially, small firms assembled frames, pedals, and other parts bought from established manufacturers in coastal cities. Over time, complete supply chains were created in Pingshang. Today, the county is a sprawl of large industrial plants linked to smaller suppliers. Many of them tucked away in rural sheds and barns. There are traffic jams as lorries and three-wheelers piled high with bicycle cartons inch down narrow village lanes. County officials report that 10 million bicycles a year are built there by thousands of firms. Official media credit Pingshang with supplying 40 percent of the children's bicycles sold worldwide. It also produces half the wheeled toys sold inside China, including bicycles, tricycles, scooters, and ride-along toy cars. This targeted approach to globalization made Pingshang prosperous, if not lovely. The county is a drab, dusty spot. Though officials have painted cycling-themed murals on walls and erected a giant sculpture of a bicycle wheel in a public square, then came China's fertility crash. In 2023, the number of Chinese newborns hit a record low of just over nine million, after falling for seven years in a row. That compares with nearly 19 million babies born in 2016. Coverage of China's economy often focuses on a handful of national champions making world-class products, from smartphones to electric vehicles. But small firms with fewer than 300 employees accounted for 79 percent of China's job creation and 68 percent of exports. The OECD, a club of mostly rich countries, reported in 2022. Though the Communist Party puts great stock in large state-owned enterprises and groundbreaking technology, China needs its backyard entrepreneurs too. The supreme leader Xi Jinping calls China's mastery of the complete array of industrial sectors a source of national strength. Last year, he urged officials to upgrade, not eliminate, industries deemed low end. Sluggish domestic demand, notably since the end of the COVID-19 pandemic, has led officials to urge manufacturers of all types to seek new markets abroad. Still, exports are not a cure-all. A bicycle industry veteran in Beijing notes that China's manufacturers saw roaring domestic and foreign sales during the pandemic as people abandoned public transport for their own two wheels. The industry now faces a hangover as inventories are cleared and many COVID-era riders lose interest. In aging societies, e-bikes for adults are selling well, but even in markets that still have children, many want to play video games, not play outdoors. Chinese consumers lack the confidence to spend, but demand is weak in many foreign markets too, says the veteran. In some of our enterprises, production is down by a third. Back in Pingchang. During pandemic lockdowns, many Chinese consumers had bills to pay, but no income. They have not yet shaken the fear that they felt then, he says. Compared with last year, his firm's sales are down by more than a half. Local officials urge businesses like his to look abroad, with a focus on countries signed up to China's Belt and Road Initiative. In 2020, less than a tenth of the firm's sales went abroad. Now exports account for. Forty to fifty percent of turnover, with customers in Russia, Malaysia, and Indonesia. He is grateful to county officials who subsidized his stand at a trade fair in Shanghai, where he met foreign buyers. But exports are hard work. The Russians are from the countries far east near the Chinese border. He thinks they ask for more time to pay when the ruble is weak, though helpfully they settle their bills in Chinese yuan. Europe and America are richer markets. But the firm cannot meet their product standards. In a farmyard workshop, 
Guarded by honking geese, Mr. Lee's business partner has a team assembling pedal tricycles for old people. These are built to order in batches of 50, which middlemen sell to domestic customers online. Compared with children who need new bikes as they grow, the disadvantage is that pensioners stop riding when they get older, says the partner earnestly. But at least China will have more and more of them. A larger tricycle assembly line is planned for next year. These are grim times for China's micro-industrialists. Their resilience is a wonder to behold.